Well, good morning. <clears throat> Back here on my beautiful porch and trusting that you're rejoicing in the Lord this morning. And, you know, we go through difficult things, don't we? We go through hardship, we go through difficult times. I didn't have a great night, but thankful for the mercies of God that are new every morning. And so, here with my coffee, and we're going to reflect on the Word of God again. Let me begin by just reading this passage that we've been in and going to expand a little bit more than what we talked about last week. James 1, 12. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot temp be tempted with evil, and he tempts no, he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it is conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. And then the verses we're going to look at this morning. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. One of the commentators, as I was reading in the section that we looked at last week of, of temptation, is that we need to understand the source of temptation. And then he said we need to understand the course of temptation. And of course, we know that the source is, is not God, because God doesn't tempt anyone. In his sovereignty, he allows those things to happen, but that's, he's not the, the source of that. And, and the course of temptation is that we are lured by our own desire, lured, enticed, and then that desire is conceived and it gives birth to sin, and sin then, when it is fully grown, brings forth death, and we, we talked about that. And then James says something that I think is, is really important. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Now, obviously, James was thinking about his own life, his own heart, and thinking about those around him in the struggle with life. And you know, all of us end up having struggles as we go through the various things that are, that are facing us the various trials, the various struggles, and emotion takes over. We begin to, well, I've written down several things that help us with deception or help to bring deception into our lives and causes us to do, to do certain things. Deception comes when we blame others, um, even God, even when we say to God, what are you doing? Why, are you, why have you brought this into my life? What's going on that makes you cause me to have these issues, these struggles, these problems? And often we deceive ourselves into thinking that somehow we deserve something better. We deserve to not have to go through 
trials and struggles. We deserve to not have to face uh, the regular stuff going on in life. So we blame. Secondly, we, we deceive ourselves by seeking fulfillment in other things. I read a wonderful article this week. Not the first time I've read it, but um, talking about idols of the heart. And we did some discussion on an, an online coaching thing that I was doing. And talking about how we allow things to, to begin to take the place of God and of the fulfillment that God gives us through Jesus. And we allow those things to begin to take precedence in our lives. We seek our fulfillment in those things. And they can't ultimately satisfy us. They can't ultimately bring us the the peace and comfort that we deceive ourselves into thinking that they can. If I just had a better job, if I just had my health, if I just had that house in the country, if I just had that caravan that I could travel around and be at peace, if I just had, if I just had. And <clears throat> that's material things, but there's also things, you know, if, if my relationship was just this, or if my, you know, if I could get some recognition or if, you know, so many things come in the way and deceive us into thinking that those are the things that will fulfill us in some way. When in actual fact, we know that the only true fulfillment we're going to have in our lives is that that comes through our relationship and understanding and enjoying and knowing God and his son Jesus in the way that we need to. So deception comes when we blame others, when we seek fulfillment in other things. Deception comes when we underestimate the sin in our hearts. Boy, I do that all the time. I surprise myself sometimes with the thoughts that come and I go, whoa, where did that come from? And then I recognize that it's, it's there the sin that that is in me and James very clearly said that he said you know the desire in our in our own hearts is what entices us what tempts us and we underestimate sin at our peril because it will certainly lead us astray the fourth thing that i wrote down is that Deception comes when we look away from God and look to other things. And this is sort of highlighted for us in verse 17. Because James says, don't be deceived. And then he follows that with every good gift and every perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. So, focus is a really important part of all of this because we deceive ourselves into thinking that somehow we have achieved Somehow we have, what's the old saying, brought ourselves up by our own bootstraps and we, we have, you know, gutted it out and we've worked hard and we deserve and we, 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 I, 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 me, me, me. All of those things become a focus in our lives rather than us in humble submission looking to God and saying we only have anything in our lives because we have a Father 
who is good. And he gives us good gifts. He, in fact, every gift that he gives is a perfect gift. Even the ones that we think are not what we actually ordered. I am a... <laughs> it's interesting because I'm... I like watching people. And when you go to a restaurant, typically, from time to time, there will be times when they don't get your order right. Somehow it's not what it ought to be or it's not... Um, cooked in the right way or whatever you know and it's interesting isn't it how entitled we get with things like that and you know we want to and and some people are better at it than others they don't rant and rave but I have been in the presence of people who have just embarrassed themselves by rather than saying being kind and you know going back but it's that sense of what we think we deserve that often comes through, doesn't it? Rather than having a sense of complete thanksgiving and an acknowledgement that God has chosen to give these good gifts. Remember the context that we're talking about here. We're talking about suffering. We're talking about, you know, struggles. We're talking about things that, that aren't necessarily um, what we would call gifts. <laughs> and yet, James is saying, every good gift, but also the perfect gifts, the, the things that are good even when we can't see the good. God knows, and He is the Father of lights. There's no variation. There's no shadow due to change. God's not sitting up in heaven, wringing His hands, wondering whether or not He's done the right thing. He's not like we would be, back and forth. Did I do it? Did I do the right thing? Have I given them what they what they actually need? No. There's no variation. There is no shadow of turning or shadow due to change. He's not wondering. His plan was set before the beginning of time. And so we can be assured that every gift that comes from the hand of the Father is good. That every gift that comes from the hand of the Father is perfect. It's exactly what He wants us to have. And when you're in the midst of rough stuff, and this is where I'm at, I, when you're in the middle of it, words can be cheap. And so I don't want to, in any way, appear to be using words cheaply. But my prayer right now in my life is, God, help me to see your good gifts. Help me to see your perfect gifts. And to acknowledge that you know what you're doing. I don't necessarily see everything but what a blessing to know that I can turn to Him and know that there's no ambiguity with God. There's no shadow. There's no variation. He is good. And that changes everything. I trust that you will reflect on those things this morning and with me pray that God would open your eyes to his good and perfect gifts. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you that we don't have to look anywhere else. We simply need to look to you and know that 
your gifts are good and perfect. Help us not to be deceived, to deceive ourselves into thinking things that are wrong or untrue about you especially. Thank you, Father, for these gifts that you give us. Instruct us, teach us, grow us, make us into the people you want us to be. Bless our, the rest of our week. Guide us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it was great to be able to share some time with you this morning. I look forward to seeing you on this coming Sunday morning. And uh, looking forward to Easter Sunday together. God bless. We'll see you soon.